we'll run us through what we've got so far. Well, Exa on the blue side, Chalka on the red, Lissandra, Lucian and Akali bands from Exa, Cassiopeia and Erga, all the power picks just getting removed here. I uh, wonder what else we could see, so many options. I like to see Alistair bands, I think Alistair is just super strong as a, a support at the moment. I feel like there are so many answers to him though. That's, true. That's uh, true. Gragas has been one that's increased in popularity a lot. Morgana's another one. Uh, we saw the Pike picked earlier, uh, so I think that there are ways in which you can deal with it, so I don't think it's the highest of priority. Aatrox on the other hand, I do think is really strong, and I am surprised that Shalko would take away uh, Cassio upset, uh, upset, Cassio Urgot and uh, Scion. It does mean that, have a look, what else is available? Aurelia is up, but that has really kind of fallen down in the priority list after some of the changes on the current patch. Sejuani is still available, surprisingly she wasn't even locked in earlier on in the day, but I do know that this is something that both junglers would be more than happy to grab for themselves. We do see the Aatrox getting locked in for XL. Uh, they took their time over that pick. I think it's the first time they've played Aatrox this split as well. Yeah, looking down, no one has played him on that side. Of course, can be flexed into the jungle. We saw that in the last game. Zersi having an incredible amount of and mid, you know, he's And mid. go kind of all over the shop. That is true. Um, so he, it depends very much on... Usually, I think people prefer to put him in the mid lane. Uh, that's where he can generate the most pressure and power, I think. Um, but something that Frost mentioned earlier on was that they do like to try and get upset a carry that he's comfortable on early in the draft. And there you see the Kaiser uh, champion that upset has, funnily enough, had a lot of success on. Yep. Uh, not only in the team fights, but also in the laning phase as well. Uh, and Abadage, or potentially Odawamne, we did see him play the Rise. I believe it was in yesterday's game. Or last week, it was uh, one of the two. He's actually the only player that's played Rise on this team. Yes, uh, uh, so but it, it can be moved into the mid lane depending on where they want to put that matchup. But I would kind of expect this Rise to go into the at the Aatrox if they can set that one up. But now immediately, ooh, we're actually going to see a Civet pick. And yeah, this is something that we saw not too long ago. Yesterday. It was fact. yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yesterday yeah. in the Misfits game, it was on the same rotation yes. with the Alistair as well. So, so they're doing exactly the same thing. Into here. a Kaiser yeah, as well. Uh, so. Yeah, it's obviously an XL special, the Civet Alistair answer to a Kaiser pick. And I think they believe that they can force 5v5s more reliably. And I do think that the team fighting has been XL's biggest strength. Uh, the laning phase for Jessica and Kasing, though, has been a weak point. I think it's something that other teams have been able to build big advantages from. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a, a Ignar focus more on actually trying to win the two versus two rather than actually roam around the map. And remember, his Thresh is still up. I think it's a fine matchup into the Alistair, maybe not for playing aggressively, but in terms of disengage, I think it can still work. And I wouldn't actually be surprised if Excel looked to try and ban it away so that he doesn't have that comfort pick. I actually quite like the Gragas support into the Alistair as well. You can interrupt the headbutt pulverize combo if you're quick enough with your body slam. So there's always that opportunity. We are into the second phase of bans though. Jace removed by Excel. Yasuo taken away from Shalka, uh, by Shalka because we saw Exile have such a good game on it yesterday uh, in their win against Misfits. And I do wonder where we go with the next stage of pick ban here. Uh, it's interesting to see Schalke have so much success uh, having brought in Dylan Falco as their coach as well. I, I do want to give him some respect. We don't always talk about him, but he left Fnatic. Fnatic are now struggling, and the team he's joined is having an incredible amount of success. Yeah, um, and Dylan Falco is a guy that seems to... I mean, he's been on a lot of successful teams. He played for Immortals before he came over mm -hmm. to Europe, and then he played for Fnatic, and now he's working with what is a very successful Schalke. Uh, so we'll see what he, is, he has planned for this yep. draft. It looks like we've seen a lot of mid laners actually taken off the board. Irelia and Yasuo with LeBlanc and Jace. Lissandra also gone. I wonder what's next in terms of priority. But there are still things like the Gallet, right? Although he has been nerfed on 9.2, you can still play it. Uh, Zoe is always a pocket pick for Exile if he wants to go towards that. Uh, instead, we're going to see the Kennen. Expect to see that up towards the top lane for Odo Omni. He's played it twice already. Uh, usually get some very good flanking positions on that champion. And then we'll see Abadaje play, play the rise in mid. Yeah, uh, thinking about what could actually be, because typically the answers to things like a rise would be something like a Casio. Um, we did see the LeBlanc picks earlier in the day. I wonder what Exile has in his bag of tricks, because all these big picks that you would typically choose into it have been banned. So he yeah. could go for the Aatrox into the mid lane um, rise, and then they could put something else into the uh, cannon. cannon top. So maybe something like a Victor for expect in the top lane. We also saw him play Rumble. I don't know if that's, I don't think you want to play that into a cannon, uh, but 
they could also do something like an Orn, maybe something a little tanky, yeah. maybe a little bit more engaged. I feel no matter where you put this Aatrox, either into Rise or Cannon, it doesn't feel like a good matchup for me. So they're going to accept that it goes into the Rise in the mid lane. Rumble going up towards top, we assume, which will play into the Cannon. And now probably looking towards what I think is going to be a jungle pick here for Schalke, but of course they do have yes. the option of playing Gragas jungle and then picking their support here. I agree with you, Manic. You talked a little bit about it earlier. Uh, the Gragas pick is quite nice into the Alistair. I believe we saw Ignar play it before as well, um, and it's a champion that I'm sure he's quite comfortable on. And there we are, the jungler that you talked about early game. Very typical for Memento, something that he loves to play, something that he played a lot on last year when he played for Rocket. I'm just kind of looking at some of the lanes. I think bot lane is the lane that I'd like to see him try and play around. I yeah. think that it's not necessarily due to the matchup, just that XL's bot lane has been shown to be weak during the laning phase and a, a lane that you can exploit. And I think that if you just leverage the fact that Ignar is on this um, Gragas and can set up some pretty solid plays, then you could look to try and build advantage on that side of the map. Whereas for XL, I'd actually like to see them invest resources into the Rumble, make that cannon matchup a lot less deadly than it potentially could be. And let's not forget that yesterday, when we saw Expect play into um, Soaz's cannon, they shut that down very, very effectively. And Soaz really struggled to have an impact in the game. So perhaps XL will look to try and play towards the top side of the map, while Schalke, I hope, tries to play to the bot side. I'll keep our eyes peeled for those jungle pathing. Uh, of course, so as not having an impact in those late game team fights was very much down to Kasing on the Alistair as well. Had great zoning potential of that cannon, could just stand in his way whenever he tries to get an engage off. So I'm sure that is what XL will be wanting to do today. Both teams coming off the back of a good win on day one here in week three. Want to continue those winning ways. I do believe actually if Schalke win this game, it's their fourth win in a row, matching. Uh, Obviously, G2 ahead at six wins in a row, and uh, Vitality took their fourth win in a row yesterday as well. Uh, no, I don't think it is, because they, um, they, Schalke won their foot day one games. They, they won one, they then lost one, yes. and then they've won one, one, and if they win this, it would be their fourth win oh, in yes, a row. Oh, right. yeah, there you go. You can math. I can do the math, not good numbers. Thanks. You know what else I can do, Vedius? What can you do? I can say welcome to Summoner's Rift, as Schalke and XL play in our second match of the day. It's going to be a good one. I feel it in my bones. He feels it in his bones. Please don't say. I don't know why this is a song, but it is now. Sorry, I'm just writing down the draft. Right, I've got that now. I'm ready to talk about League of Legends. Okay, what do you want to talk about? Because you said you want to see XL play up towards the top side of the map. How do they do that? By ganking it, man. Cool. Uh, so the thing about Ken in matchups is he's really annoying during the laning phase. You'll notice that he is running the Doran's Blade and he has the Kleptomancy rune. So for those that may not be familiar with the Kennen matchup, he is a ranged matchup into a melee matchup. And when he specs his W, he can get a lot of obnoxious harass off. Uh, especially when he, once he's hit you for a fifth time, his next auto will apply a passive stack. I forget the name of it. Um, but you can then use your uh, W ability to then proc it, which means that you get bonus damage on top of that. Uh, and if you get three of those, you can stun them. And basically against melee matchups, it's really annoying. So you can generate a lot of gold by just having a range advantage, and it means that you get to these item spikes way sooner. So things like the Proto Belt, the Zonyas, you can get much earlier in the game, the longer that you can keep the laning phase going, uh, which is why you kind of want to try and shut it down. Because what you don't want is a well-farmed cannon coming into the mid-game with two items, because then he, like, kills everything. Uh, he's very, very effective, not only in a side lane, but also in these team fights. And this will be a rough matchup for Expect, so we want to see some kind of involvement of Cajal to mitigate the pressure that Odo Omni will be able to exert. I'm actually going to ask our observers quickly just to look at the gold differences, because I know it's very early in the game, but you already see what that Kleptomancy does, right? Everyone's basically even on CS, and you have 140 gold leak okay. on the cannon over uh, Expect. So this is what Kleptomancy does, and this is the reason it's so effective on a top laner. And uh, so one of my favorite things about cannon that is like my fun fact is that his E actually gives you um, defenses when you're in it. So when you use the E, you're actually a lot tankier than you typically are, which a lot of people don't expect. Level two advantage for Igni and upset down towards this bottom side means that they are able just to force a Jeskler and Kasing away. Jeskler and Kasing gave Kato a little bit of a hand, so Igni just stands there. He's like, okay, I'm gonna put my fat body in the way of this minion wave. But eventually, uh, Jeskler and Kasing will hit level two and they'll be okay. 
for the time being. Memento is on the top side of the map, but there's a ward spotting him out on this scuttle crab, so don't expect expect to get ganked. Come on, we do it every game. But the problem is, I use expect as a word yeah. just so many times. Do you have any like other words? Anticipate. Oh, okay, that's the word. We're going to use anticipate. Yeah, but we're going to use it every single time now. <laughs> it's better than using the pun, medic. Okay. So, I anticipate uh, the bot lane for XL to be struggling in these early lane stages, largely because with Ignat on the Gragas, you have the extra bit of wave clear with the barrel and upset on the Kaisa. While she does typically have less clear than a Civet does, um, she can't really generate that much pressure until later on. So now, Mento has found Kadrill. Spike comes down from Kadrill. He'll get the blue buff. Mento will be on the chase. It flash away from Kadrill, but the chase is good for Memento. Waited on the sweep. Gets him under the tower. Memento, one more shot. Is it enough? It is! One for one trade, but first blood to Shalk. But that was both junglers investing their flashes. Memento, I feel, overcommitted. He didn't need to go for that dive because he'd already gotten the flash out from Kadrol. And in the event that he met him in a 2v2 later on, that would have resulted in a kill. Now, the advantage that Memento had here was he has more health, he is full on mana, and Kadrol is just forced to run away. And I think he was expecting the stun to come out sooner. Really good patience there coming out from Memento, but. I like the response from Kadro. The last second, he lands the slow from his undertow, is able to proc the E as well, even gets a bit of lifesteal off the back of his W, but then qua uh, can't quite get away with his life. So it ends up just being a one for one. But a gold lead already for Shaku as well, about 800 gold ahead. You've got a 10 CS lead in the bottom lane, you've got a 15 CS lead in the mid lane as well, and everything is coming up daisies for the Shaku Null Fear lineup. I'm interested about Abadaji going for the phase rush. It's more commonly what we see on the rise in the mid lane and I guess he doesn't expect Exile to jump onto him too much. But uh, he needs to be aware the momentum is hanging around. Ignar is also making his way up through the river but he has been spotted. Exile's got to feel that something is amiss here. Still has Flash. Still has Ignite. They're going to force him off the tower. We talked a lot about how uh, those turret platings are important and if you can just get a little bit more chip damage you do work your way towards that first plate. To with the push potential, push pressure that Abadage has in the mid lane, they just thought, well, maybe we can make something work. Abadage is doing a great job in the mid lane, though. You already mentioned the CS earlier on, and you talked a little bit about the phase rush, but something you said in draft was that regardless of where the Aatrox goes, he's going to have a rough time in the laning phase, and it feels like Schalke, they prepared for it. We saw them ban away the Scion and left the Aatrox open, and they've clearly come in with a plan, and right now they are executing upon it perfectly. So XL struggling in the mid lane, struggling down towards the bottom. Surprisingly, XL actually holding his own up against Odo Omne towards the top side. And typically that would be a much more difficult matchup, but he's doing fine. I think maybe he's showing a little bit more respect because Memento is spending a lot more of his jungle time towards the bot side of the map and, and the enemy jungle, of course. Yeah. But it looks like through uh, pushing out the bottom lane, they will just be able to go for this Ocean Dragon. Schalke with the early advantages and Kadro. Looking for a gank. Odoamne, level 6, now has the Slicing Maelstrom. Kedra will not find it. Waiting around the corner. Think. If, if Odoamne uses his E, that's the opportunity to go. Hasn't used it yet. There's the Equalizer E flash. Do get the summoner out. Yep. Which means you can set up for a play later on, but Odoamne still has his ultimate, so it won't be extremely easy for the time being, though. You kind of look at this whole composition from Schalke. They have a pretty solid 1-3-1. One, one. Uh, their team fighting is also can be effective. Um, because you have the Kaiser, one of the best team fighters in the game, thanks to her mobility. You also have the Camille Kennen combo, very, very effective. And there's the Gragas ultimate to split apart XL. Um, and also, when XL don't actually have that much hard crowd control, it can be challenging for them to actually reliably keep Schalke in place to kind of find all that area of effect damage that the um, Civet will want to pull off. So I do think that Schalke do have good scaling, but at the same time, the Sivir obviously yep. scales very well into the late game. Uh, Aatrox, on this patch, his late game did get hurt a little bit. And I do think that Rumble's damage is much harder to execute the later into the game that you go. So I think that XL have a slightly stronger spike with their solo laners around the mid game. But again, like they're always going to be valuable in the late game. But I just, I just look at Shalka's comp and I think XL are in a bit of a timer. I think it's going to be really difficult for XL to, to really win the late game fight. So I'm looking at them to try and force something a little bit more towards the earlier mid game. And it, whenever you look at someone to force something for XL, you have to turn your eyes towards Kadro. This jungler has been the spark, the ignition for XL in every single one of their games. 100% kill participation at 15 minutes. Nothing happens without his say so on the map. Uh, second in kills and assists at 15 minutes amongst junglers as well. And he does it 
but when he doesn't even spend that much time around his lane. It's actually quite low down in terms of jungle proximity, which means when he does gank, it's usually effective. Yeah, so he's not like one of these junglers that just ganks, 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 ganks. Like Maxor is someone that has uh, regular jungle activity in the early game. Um, but for Kedril, he just tries to be a lot more effective, efficient with his gank styles. Now, remember we talked about earlier, Medic, I want to see the oh, jungler in bot side. Straight into it, the stun lock comes out, Jessica's done. And these are the kind of ganks I wanted to see. Uh, the wave was stacked underneath the tower of Schalke. Uh, XL had no vision in the river, which means that they ended up getting punished. Now we see a fight in the mid lane. So Abadaje will be fine here. Uh, forces XL back for the moment and nothing really going there, but still that 30 CS lead for the German mid laner, the rookie mid that we talked about at the top of the show. I told you guys, keep your eyes on him. And that is exactly where you should be focusing throughout this game. Because if he hits two item, three item rise, he is going to be a machine gun of damage for Schalke Nullfear. Where do you want to go, Vetti? Well, I'm just keeping my eyes on what the supports are doing right now because I'm expecting a lot of action in the mid lane. Here comes Cadrol. Chains did not connect. Abadaji flashes away. Don't land the slow from the undertow and Ignar will come up as well. But it was a flash burnt from Abadage, which means that uh, Exile and Cadrol can try to do something again if they want. Ignar still staying around here. Camille, Memento just up towards the top side of this fight, actually. Moving between the two lanes right now. There we go. Abadage locked up. Inferno Chains comes down. And Kissing flashes in. And Abadage is done for. And now Ignar not in the best of shapes because he hasn't got his flash. Burn it earlier. Knocked back by Kissing. Looking for the body slam across the wall. Lands the slow. Exile jumps forward though. And the Darking Blade connects. So I have to think. Yeah. Ignar's just going to continually uh, run back towards his base. But Kissing and Kedro should have the chase here. Ignar not going to get to the blast. Going to time. It's on the wrong side of it. Kissing will have the stun. And the. Uh, the Gragas will go down. Good stuff from XL there to get two kills in the mid lane. So I like the fact that XL double down on the mid lane play. They get the flash out from Amadage initially. They know that they have vision control over the top side. And that with the flash in from Kasing, the crowd controlled combo of Alistair and the E from Aatrox means that they can actually lock him down for long enough to find the kill. And then obviously the chase from comes out from Ignar. But it does mean that some of the pressure gets alleviated from Exile. Uh, he will be able to get a bit of gold back in his pocket, and he'll be able to pick up a little bit more farm now that uh, the the rise is dead. So they've closed the gold gap a little bit, but it's still pretty big. It's still pretty big. It's about 1,500 gold between the two teams, and if you press actually a lot of that is sitting on that AD carry. 700 gold difference, upset. Once again, showing his strength, not only in the laning phase, but just about getting ahead of his opponent. But let's not forget what we talked about, Medic, with regards to the top side of the map. Odoamne with the Kleptomancy. He's just built himself up a 700 gold lead, which is arguably the biggest in the game, just from his Kleptomancy. And yep. this is what we said. This is why this rune is very effective when he can just sit in lane and free farm, because he gets those items much earlier in the game, which means that he's going to be much more relevant earlier in the game and uh, that's a scary point for XL which is kind of why I wanted to see them invest a little more towards the top side of the map but oh, well, he's a happy camper right now definitely is and we have to see how XL deal with being on this timer Ignite getting some wards in here it's the second dragon of the game only 11 minutes in Shaka took the first one very quickly last time Kedro pops the undertow across the wall will realize Shaka are doing it and doesn't really have a way to react so double ocean makes it even easier for upset for Abadage and for Oduamne to stay in these lanes. Just elongates that laning phase for them if they want to. Because of the extra regeneration you get, you don't have to back as often. Slow and steady is the game right now, Medic. Uh, I mean, that's what we saw from Exile yesterday as well, but Exile's trying to do something about that. Abadage can't get away, and Exile gets his first kill of the game. Once again, a good gank from Kedro right at the right time, and they'll get some turret placings down here as well. Kissing with Demolish will only help speed that up. Ooh, XL going to be picking up some nice gold from the turret plating. Yep. Uh, but also finding another kill onto Abadage will help continue to close the gap, and now expect actually going all in onto Odo. Odo still has Flash here, but we'll just use the Slicing Master for the time being. Uh, gets the stun off, and that's what the Mark of the Storm can do, of course. That cannon passive just stuns him up. Ends up being an ult for ult. Odo will back away, and I wonder if they're going to try and use a teleport advantage here. Will Odo TP back into the lane? If he does, will expect then have to TP himself. There's the teleport. Uh, will expect have to burn his TP here, because if not, they have that window of opportunity that XL will want to stop themselves from running down the clock. In this I think game. you'll just TP back to lane, personally. Yeah. I don't think you can afford to give turret playing gold over to... Uh... Oh, now he definitely has to TP back to lane. Yeah. 
you can't afford to give that solo turret playing gold to your opposition if you walk all the way back with a wave just stopping here then you're guaranteed to give it away so i think he has to now Odo did take two tower shots which means oh i thought he might have tp to a minion um, so he could have kept the wave there but he doesn't not gonna happen you know, I played Rumble in uh, Ultra Rapid Fire. Yeah. Not the best. Not the best. You uh, don't have a dash, and it's a bit difficult. Exile in a bit of a difficult situation here as well. Put in the Hextech Ultimatum, but a Memento and Abadagi just going to back away. Respecting the fact that Kader was there and the fact that World Ender was popped by the XL mid laner. Yeah, I think Shalka didn't have enough information on where the rest of XL were, so they decided not to overcommit and instead decided to back off. They still got the Ignite out from Exile, will reduce some of his kill pressure. So. And a turret plate on Abadago, which is always very helpful. Uh, with that 25 CS lead as well, although he's died twice, he is actually even in gold in that mid lane, which is always a helpful thing to do to be with the Rise. Has that tier stacking up, uh, has, looks like Ninja Tarbies as well in his back pocket, just knows there's a, there's a lot of attack damage, a lot of AD on the side of Exile. Really only expect doing any magic damage at all. He also wants it for the 1v1 matchup because yeah. Exile really does hurt, especially once he completes his first item. But turret plates are nearly down on the bot side. Schalke taking that time, even though Exile had the kill advantage. Again, we already talked about it. Yes, the turret plating, everything is what is allowing Schalke to have such a significant lead in the early game. And they're just scaling up. They're happy. They've got the tier slowly building for Abadage. Odoamne has already completed the proto belt. Schalke are just fine and comfortable. Yeah. Taking their time. I mean, XL seem pretty comfortable at the moment as well. They get the Rift Herald, they can then use that to maybe force down mid. Turret placing's just fallen off, so upset and uh, Ignite, even though they get the first tower, don't get the entirety of that placing. There's the Rift Herald used mid. Abadage actually was rotating down towards the bottom lane, so this should just be a tower going over in exchange for XL. And uh, it means that we'll, we'll see about a two and a half, three thousand gold difference between these teams after that tower goes down. Riftard gets another charge in, which is always a bonus when you can get it through. Abadaje unable to keep it from tunneling its way towards that tower. So, so very. Some of the questions I get asked as a caster is like, when you look at compositions, how do you identify you know, which one is the stronger one of the late game, early game, etc., etc.? And one of my strategies is thinking about who offers more at what point in the game. And I look at someone like an Aatrox versus a Rise, and I think to myself, okay. Let's just say they were to 1v1, who would I put my money on? And because of the mobility and the shields and the damage that a Rise has, to me, I think the Rise would be more valuable in the late game. Right, so that's one reason why maybe he would scale a little bit. It's a 1v1 at full items, so, so. Yeah, Well, like 4, yeah. 5, like that point in the game. Uh, even at this point, I still feel the Rise would have an advantage, mainly because he wouldn't actually just get up close and personal. Yeah, you just lock him in place and run away. And then run away, right? So um, I feel like that Rise is just a very good pick into the Aatrox. Uh, so just in terms of scaling, I think, okay, yes. But then, you know, you kind of look at this comp from XL and you think, but we all know that Civis scales really well, so surely that will counterbalance it. But the problem with that is you just then have to look at how she works in a late game environment, and that's around team fighting. And typically what she wants is a big front line to play around, which she unfortunately doesn't really have. And I think we're actually going to get an example of this 1v1 right now, and you'll see that Abadagi just kind of dances around. Runs away. Keep him locked down, but he's buying time for his jungler to arrive. And you can actually see it's really difficult for Exile to commit. Yeah. So that's kind of what happens in that situation. But this is why I'm kind of skeptical of Exile scaling, because I think that it's way harder for Sivir to leverage her late game power compared to someone like the Kaiser, uh, who independently is strong in the late game. If you just give her three items, then regardless of what her team comp is, she can offer a lot of value because she can dive onto the back line, she can just kill the front line. Uh, she's a very strong duelist. And overall, she's just a little bit more all-encompassing as a late-game yeah. hyper-carry versus Sivir, who's very reliant on hitting as many people as possible with her skills once she's got all of her items done. So that's why I'm a little concerned right now for XL that the game is slowing down, and I just kind of want to see them be a little more proactive right now. But again, it's hard because they are at such a big goal deficit. They haven't even completed a lot of their first core items. So if they try to fight now, they're probably going to lose anyway. Just because you're behind in terms of itemization. Uh, yesterday, XL, of course, had the Urgot on the front line. It was Expect who piloted that one and got them the Baron still that really yeah. got them back in the game. I think they. Well, I'd be careful to say back in the game because they yeah. did have a lot of control. Yeah. I think that solidified. They solidified the game. Yes. I, will, I will agree with you there. Um, I think the bonus for XL when you when I look at the 
Schalke composition is there aren't any real tanks on that side either. So if Jessica has the opportunity as a three item Siver to get a couple of rico ricochet bounces off, that's a good point. You are going to shred through that line, right? Good point. Yeah. But there's so many different ways he could get caught out. Slicing Maelstrom, Hexic Ultimatum, the Gragas Barrel as well, the explosive cast, even Upset just jumping onto the back line, which we've seen him do in team fights before. So. And that's the that's the other thing to think about uh, with like late game team fights as well and scaling. How many damage dealers do you actually have, right? And for XL, they have three. Right, with Aatrox, Rumble, and... The, uh, I've seen an Alistair put out a fair <laughs> chunk of damage. I get have the seen Alistair's 1v1 AD carries, that's true. Um, ooh, Abadage could be in some danger right now. Mentos here, there's the Realm Warp as well in k XL. Like, okay! Still just buying time on the side of Shark. They don't need to overcommit for anything. They're still relying on their scaling. Um, but yeah, uh, wait, I was saying something now. You're talking about the three damage dealers on Exxon. Ah, uh, yes, uh, but the the same can be said for Shalker, right? They have the Cannon, they have the Rise, and then they have the uh, Kaiser as well. So I think they're pretty even in terms of damage, but I just, again, I just think that with more items, Shalker do more damage. So I'm just, I'm concerned right now for XL. I think that they're, they're not being proactive enough to leverage the composition that they have. But I think if you're Schalke, you're pretty happy with the way the game's going. Yeah, you know, you've delayed happy. the game, you played a good early game, you know, without taking too many risks, just by farming up well and outplaying your opponents. You are about 4,000 gold ahead. Flashes away here from x -Spec. Oh, do I know on the chase? There's Upset jumping across the wall as well. Enough damage comes out from Upset. To the red carpet comes down as well, but Upset will survive. It's a good play from Schalke, rotating down towards the bottom side of the map. I'm surprised that they invested so much to get that kill. That was three summoner spells burnt and two ultimates. But if they can convert it into another objective, it might be worth. But right now, it doesn't look like they can actually get much from it. They'll steal a couple of enemy jungle camps. They'll get a bit of deep vision down. And Abadage is now in a 1v2. World Ender used by Exile. There's the Infernal Chains as well. Exile's just going to tank this one up for quite a while. Abadage just outplays them. Outplays them entirely in the 1v2. Predator's is going to be popped here by Kedra to run away. And uh, XL unable to do something in response to but that Shalker play. That's another summer spell used from the side of Shalker. Odo Omni burnt his teleport in order to help his uh, mid laner when I don't think he actually needed it. Mm -hmm. So that's now a big global cooldown that's going to be left unavailable. Um, and I just think it's like, why are they making this play right? That's, that's what I'm thinking. And I see that they're trying to kill Expect, and I think their next goal is to convert this into a tower, but Expect has what looks to be like the, the rune that gives you a magic shield as well, which mitigates some of the damage, forcing Upset to actually dive underneath the tower. He takes two tower shots, and now he's not confident enough to stick to it. So because of uh, Expect buying enough time, Schalke don't actually have the resources to then commit to the tower, so they can't convert it into any objective. So a lot of was burnt for very little gain, which should slow the game down, but again, that's, that's not the end of the world for Schalke, who is still trying to scale up. Not at all. Uh, anyone wondering at home, it's Nullifying All is the name, the name of yes. that rune. It's that's the, the Badger. I believe it's in the first stage of the... Yes, tier three. one. Yeah, tier one on the left. I don't know why I know that. It's Earth. It's Earth, because you can't take either of the other two, but in case it happens in the mid lane, Exile caught out. Memento dunks him into the Hextech Older Maiden. Now Kissing is on that front line. That's a great equalizer across them all. Memento goes golden, flashes away. The teleport coming in as well as Abadaji wants to join the fight. Slicing Mastrip doesn't catch on to expect, but the Mark of the Storm does. Now Upset jumps forward as well. Jester low on the back line, down to half. Two kills for Shalka and the Baron in their sights. Good fight there for Schalke. They find a quick pick onto Exile. Wasn't sure if his ultimate was available, but he definitely never had an opportunity to use it. Schalke setting a trap right now, seeing if they can find another pick onto XL, but XL do have that ward sitting outside the pit. They will be spotted. The Baron has been started very early Baron into the game. Kedor still alive though, has the flash, has the blast cone to try and steal this one away. Will we see a blast cone change the impact of a game once again? Kedor looking for it. Realm Warp comes out. Schalke on the chase. They stand up! They don't take the Realm Warp! Kedor doesn't get in though. The Baron goes down and secured by Schalke. And XL just run away. Unable to do anything quite yet. Kissing on the flank here. The blast gun used by Ignar and XL. Just can't quite find an avenue to attack onto that. Good play from Schalke to get the Baron and get out. So they will convert this. Never mind, no, they won't. Odo Omni gets there in time. But uh, very early Baron for Schalke. Now remember that the Baron changes on this patch mean that the minions aren't as strong as they used to be. It's a little harder to end the game from a Baron at 22 minutes than it used to be. Um, but still a very big gold advantage, and it will allow them to, at the very least, break even further into the base of it. Yeah, I mean, that's a 6,000 gold advantage, and it's, it's displaying itself in terms of itemization as well. Look at that, 2,000 between the two AD carries. You already have Ginsu's and
and the Storm Razor complete on that Kai. So you've got the Seraphs, Oblivion Orb on Abadage, Spellbinder on Oduwamne, which I really like as well. The ability to get into that backline just that little bit quicker can totally change a team fight. And we're not looking at three items here, yeah. we're looking at two items. When she gets that third, when she gets that Infinity Edge, maybe Exo will have a chance to turn this game around, but maybe it will be too late. Yeah, uh, and this is a weird thing about XL, right? They have those really tense games against the likes of G2 and Misfits, and then the day after, they just seem to just slow down dramatically. Where's, they the, do where's the consistency? Yeah, I think, I think that's a good word, Medic. They, they don't seem to be as consistent. I was expecting a little bit more, but so far they have played it very slow. We've seen a couple ganks from Kadrol in the mid lane, unfortunately not converted into much. And now Sharko are playing the one through one. We talked that they did have this option available to them. While their team fighting is good, they also just have strong solo laners that can move off into a side lane. And because of how strong they are at this point in the game with the Baron buff, it's a lot more efficient to actually just attack multiple sides of the map. Right, so expect dealing with Abadaga in the bottom lane. Well, I say dealing, trying to hold him off, trying to stem that tide down towards that bottom side. He's plugging the dam as much as he can, but both towers in the side lanes fall, and it's a 10,000 gold lead now for Schalke. Ignor can just stand right next to this tower. The cannon waves, of course, spawning more often since the uh, 9.1 changes just makes it so easy for Schalke to slowly close out this game. Chipping and chipping. Slow, steady, calm, calculated play coming out from Schalke. They don't need to take any gambles or big risks. Working their way into the base. Exile two levels below Abadage. You can see Kassane looking for something. There is no wave right now in mid. Two members of Schalke bot just slowly moving around the map. And the threat is always there of Memento just jumping onto you as well. Like, all it takes is a good flank from Odo Amne or Memento with a Hexagold Amaze when you're locked in this electric cage of doom. And there's not really much you can do about it. my name for the slicing mouse from the I know, I just like, tried to not... Uh, tried to ignore it, I understand. That's quite, you know, cringe, and that's not really my jam. Nah, that's true. You're much more serious in terms of casting Abaddon. You're very serious about doing the damage here to <laughs> Exile, because Sing here just to try and hold him off, but I have to think XL need to, uh, need to do something. I have to pull the trigger, I have to make a play, because otherwise Shalko will just slowly eat the life out of this game. Baron Buff has fallen off, or is about to fall off, I believe. Uh, and uh, for the time being, we will just reset. Didn't break any inhibitors. That is the one thing you can say to the XL fans. Right like, side. Inhibitors are not dead yet. You still have them. Uh, but you are 10,000 gold in the hole. And now you're looking at three items complete on that Kaiser as well. Next steps you have to think, Infernal Dragon. Well, the Baron spawns much quicker than it used to. It's true. Uh, so I imagine that Shark will actually just wait for that, because again, scaling is on their side. They don't really have to rush anything. Uh, if XL's next best opportunity will be to try and fight around the Baron pit, but they have no vision in their half of the jungle and they can't really leave their base to get it. So Shalka are just suffocating XL right now and they'll force them into this situation where they'll either fight them in this choke point where the Rise and the Cannon can run rampant. Um, or that Shark will just secure the Baron. So XL very limited in terms of their options right now. They, ideally, if they can find a pick or kind of punish a mistake from Shalka, is their next best bet. I mean, you have to do it pretty soon as well. Abadage not quite pushed in that bottom lane completely, doesn't have the teleport either. So you do have a small opportunity here to make a play, but Schalke willing just to step back, willing just to wait it out. And when you have all three lanes pushing in, there's basically nothing XL can do. Yeah, so like, singing, unfortunately, yeah, there's, unfortunately, there's not a lot more to say. So I'm just trying to hum for the viewers, you know? Okay. Ba, ba, da, da, what, name the song. I'm pretty sure that's Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. No, it's not. <laughs> that's... Isn't that the Macarena? No. Oh, my, okay. So that, that, now you're just getting me to hum what you want me to hum. No, <laughs> I'd never do that, Benny. Are you manipulating me, Medic? For the last two years. <laughs> I've been growing you into my little pawn. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your humming applause. I've been working on it my entire <laughs> life for this one moment. Okay, my fair, mother didn't fair, believe that me. That was also not humming. <laughs> <laughs> humming is. Mm, 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 mm. You have to have your mouth closed. What is a fight? <laughs> There's a fight in the bottom end. Exile pops the world end. Uh, Infernal Chase as well. Zoda 1 maybe engage the fight. Upset here. The world end of Resurrection Passive is going to time out in just a second. And Exile was just knocked back into the wall. Easy enough kill for Schalke. 
And that is enough action for now. Let's calm down. There's been too much action this game. It's just, you know, we had G2 versus Splice, which was like intense, intense, intense. And then we've got this just yeah. calm, calculated, slow play from Shark of the XL. I was actually going to go camping last game because it was so intense. Wait, there's a joke there. Nope, can't get it. Anyway, Dragon will go in favor of Schalke. The Baron has just spawned. I'm glad you're entertaining yourself. I hope the audience found it funny. I didn't just hum on casts. <laughs> I think I'm good for the moment. Okay, the let's, get, let's get back Baron on screen. Is alive Baron now. is alive okay. Baron is alive. So you can see the uh, no deep vision has been set up, but Schalke don't really need it. Um, because they're keeping Odo Omni down towards the bot side, and the Baron pit itself is dark. Now, Kedril is hanging around while Ignar clears some vision. Um, but if he face checks by himself, he might die. And this Baron is going to go down before he can even get close enough anyway. Well, you either man up, you die trying, and he doesn't get the Baron. Secured by Memento, he's going to fall after it. And he does die, doesn't get the Baron, and now Shaka will just look for the push in. 40 seconds left on Kedro. You can just split the lanes if you want to. You can all barrel down mid. Schalke can pretty much have it any way they want it. Yeah, 15,000 is the gold lead for Schalke. There are no options left for XL, I'm going to quite confidently say. And uh, it's just a matter of time now. Oh, Ignar flashed in a straight line there. <laughs> they get the, a lot of damage down onto Ignar. He goes into the stopwatch, but eventually will fall. And now XL actually have a man advantage in about 16 seconds. Time momentum and upset. Getting this mid lane though. tower upset. Chased out here by Exile, pops the killer instinct, but Exile's still on the job. Oh my god! Okay, yeah, that's a, that's a late game, guys. I can see why you were worried about the scaling for Exile. Shalka gonna get the inhibition in the top lane. They get bot as well. They were going towards the mid lane, and you have to think in the 4v4, which is about to commence, Shalka will come out on top. So it's just a matter of time now. They're sieging onto those Nexus Towers. Four versus four. Exile is gone. It's a level 16, guys, a level 17 rise. They're just waiting for the minion waves to arrive. Odo Omni even has his ultimate available. Will they go for the dive? Will they go for kills? Odo Omni chased off by Kissing down towards the bottom side. He uses the lightning rush to get away. That's the first Nexus Tower down. Ups have stepping forward, and this should just be the game for Schalke. They force XL back towards their fountain. And with their fourth win in a row, Schalke solidify themselves at the top of the... I'm going to do it again, though. Their fourth win in a row. Schalke solidify themselves at the top of the alleys. They were right behind G2. I think they had a really strong draft. I think they prepared perfectly for XL. I think that we saw Xpec's top pool perhaps exposed a little bit. Yeah, I agree with options. that. I agree with that. Um, we'll have to see how that develops throughout the rest of the split, but can't really fault Schalke. They played everything extremely well. The only criticism you can have is that Avadagi died in the mid lane. But when three members come within three times, within like five minutes, you know, that's a, that's a fine loss to have. And he still maintained a gold lead. I mean, he had 93 CS ahead by the end of the day. He was in a pretty strong spot. Give it a lot of credit down to what's upset and Ignite as well in that bottom lane. We said that the bottom lane of uh, XL was probably a weakness you could expose. They definitely did that. Yep. Uh, and across the board, just Schalke looking strong. This is the sort of win where, although perhaps slightly anticlimactic for Schalke fans because it was so well coordinated, this is the sort of win that puts you on the podium at the end of the year. You have to get these consistent wins. This, this actually says a lot to me in terms of how our whole league looks because I actually think XL is this very solid team yep. that kind of rests in the middle of the pack. And teams that can cleanly beat them, I think, distinguish themselves as one of the better teams in Europe. And I think we saw that from uh, Schalke. Yep. And I think we, we saw it also as well last week versus Splice as well. Uh, and I just think that when teams struggle against XL, you've got to bring into question, like, what do they actually show? Because XL have proven that if they can get to the late game on even footing, then they'll fight you, they'll challenge you, they have some promising stuff. Um, but if you can just slowly deconstruct them, so far I haven't really been able to find any answers to get out of it. Definitely agree with you there, Veria Schalke. Very happy with their win. I think, considering they've only lost to G2 so far, things are great for them. And they beat Vitality, although it was week one, day one Vitality. I think I would uh, happily put them in my top three. I'm curious as to... Wait, has Schalke beaten Misfits yet? Uh, I do not believe so. Uh, let me continue to talk while I do not look up our schedule and check to see if they ever... St I don't think so, Vedius, because it's, so. it's the first game of next week, which the I knew off the top of, of my head. first game of next week? Wow. I knew well, off the top of my head. That's actually a really exciting one. I think, it's, ex I think it's exciting if Misfits start playing through bot lane again. 
Because if Misfits play like they did yesterday... No, but I think so. A lot of people, you know, have some question marks around how strong actually Misfits are, you know, losing to XL. Some of the teams that they beat at the beginning of the split were actually are now on the bottom end of our table. Yeah. And going up against Schalke, who I think are quite convincingly top three yeah, alongside so Vitality and G2. You. I agree with that. You know, if Misfits want to convince everyone that they are still a top three team in Europe, then they're fighting for that top spot, then I think they need to get a win over Schalke. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we've got some really exciting games coming up next week, but we still have more action left in the day with three games left. Yeah, some, there's some great ones as well. SKOG is going to be pretty good. Rogue Vitality could be interesting. Misfits Fanatic, the Whippo Soaz rivalry to end That's out the day true. as well. That's going to be a good one as well. Yeah, it definitely is. But yeah, uh, very... Not the most exciting game, I'll but, be honest. But it was exciting because we got to listen to Hum. <laughs> I mean, and it, you didn't remember what the word Hum meant. <laughs> and you, you even started off by singing as we went up to this. Like, it was a very musically inclined Vedius today. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need a new, like we've got Flexia, so we've got Detective Vedius. Have you got another not, cousin? Like, have, you, uh, have you got another cousin who I, does music? Maybe. Musicus? I have a large family. He sounds like an old gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> Are you not entertained, entertained by, by my, my music? music? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting goofy now. Yeah. All right. Um, this is normally when we do the player of the game vote, yeah. but we haven't been given the player of the game vote yet. <laughs> Who would so your player of the game vote be? This Medic? is why they let me do it, because <laughs> I, I wait until they give us the signal, and then I do it, Vedius. But for now, for now, I think we can talk a little bit about um, maybe the next steps for Schalke, because they look very strong in this game. It was a convincing win against XL, but is there anything you think they need to clean up in their, oh, in their game? You think it was perfect? a really good game. Okay. That was a very good League of Legends. But like, generally, not just off this game, is there anything that you think maybe that's a weakness for Schalke? So far, no. I like their drafts. I like their flexibility. I I like Chalka. I think yeah. they're a really good team. Do you want to read it? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we want to know who you think should be key player of the game. So hit us up on LOL Esports on Twitter with your pick of Odoamne, Memento, and Upset. Now, I think like you could have mentioned everyone in this team. Yeah. I think those are three great options. Um, but yeah. You could have. Throw it, Medic. I'm going to throw it. We've got Lord standing by with Odoamne. Let's see what he has to say. Thank you very much, guys, and thank you, Odo, for joining me. You were looking so serious, even though you won. What happened in the end? Uh, I mean, I, I just got hard into it because everyone was like, okay, guys, let's just farm some damage and stuff. And then I went a bit too deep, and I was like, okay, guys, just please end the game so I can save my KDA. And everyone, was, <laughs> everyone just started screaming, no, just let him die. So, I don't know, everyone just... Oh, no. <laughs> yikes. Bad teammates. <laughs> I mean... Even then, you're ending this third week on five and one. Did you expect to be that good? Uh, uh, I expected us to be kind of good uh -huh. because um, all of us, the players, are really aggressive and really good. And all of us want to, you know, just brawl and skirmish a lot. So I think the way the meta is right now kind of favors us a lot. But I didn't really expect us to be, you know, kind of at the top of the standings. I expected us to be like, you know, good, maybe in like top four, top five. But I didn't expect us to have like such a good week. But then again, I think we only had one really hard opponent in G2. And next week we have Misfits and Origin. So if you manage to go 2-0 in that week, then that's something I'll be like happy with. You know, then we can start talking about Schalke being a contender for everything. We'll get back to this one right after, but you were mentioning the meta and how it fits you. You've been playing Kennen three times now and winning on Kennen three times. Why do you like this champion so much? And why is it so successful? Uh, I mean, it's kind of a throwback to my better days at Worlds in 2016, when the meta for top lane was just Kennen, Rumble, and Jace. And uh, at that Worlds, Kennen was my best champion, so I could say it's kind of like a pocket pick, because I don't see a lot of people playing it, not even like, other regions or in EU, it's kind of like my own thing where I just can blind pick cannon and just make it work just because, I don't know, with Klepto and such a strong laning phase, it's really easy to just take over games. Well, I'm lucky this, uh, I'm happy this is a big working for you guys. You were mentioning facing Misfits next week. How do you feel about this matchup? Uh, whew, well, from, from what I know and what we, they show us in scrims, I think it's going to be a really fast game. Fast? Yeah. Okay. In which favor? Misfits, of course. Yeah, sure. We'll see about this. And thank you for joining me after this victory. And for more on this game, let's send it to Trevor and Froskarin. 
Thank you very much, Law. Oda Wamno, what a troll. It's going to be a fast game for misfits, of course. <laughs> a little bit of banter. Uh, anyways, welcome. I'm joined, of course, by Frost Grown at the machine that we here at the LEC call the Telestrator. Now, we're going to break down uh, one of the plays that, Frost, you were quite excited about, and it's intentionally about setting up a gank for later on. So set set this up for me. Okay, so this is right as Upset has backed and he's walking back into the lane. Now, what's going to happen is that Ignar is actually going to stall the backs of Kasing and Jeskla. He's only going to interrupt the Alistar right here. He'll step forward. But I want actually everyone to pay attention to what Upset does while his support disrupts their backs. Upset grabs hold of the minion aggro and places a control board. Now, why this is important is because he's actually effectively setting up a freeze on Jeskla, which will be punished immediately. So grabs the aggro. You can now see that the wave's much larger on the blue side, and it's basically just going to sit there. That means Sivir's going to have so much farther to walk and to try to CS here. And you can already see Jeskla kind of knows that he's in a bad situation. He's posturing a little bit defensively. He's scared. He's saying, okay, if I want the CS, if I want to do it, I have to overextend. And right on time, who is it? It's Ignar. And following behind him, here comes Memento. And what this freeze does is it sets up Jeskla for an immediate gank to then die. And what's cool about this <laughs> is that it's like a minute in advance. And this is why Shalka are such a clever team. And also, even if you look at Jessica's positioning, he didn't even overextend in the lane. He knew that there was a threat. And the whole time I was watching that uh, Frosker, and Memento was near his red buff when the, when the minimum freeze started. We, of course, fast forwarded through it. But, like, what's the takeaway? Okay, because you were very, very hyped about the play. You were very excited as you were breaking it down for me on the desk. But if I zoom out, what does this tell me about the team or the players? It basically means that when you see that in a minute in advance, as soon as I saw Upset grab the freeze, I was like, oh, they're going to camp bottom because Jess is going to have to overextend and they're going to immediately punish it. And then it was the fact that it also had the control ward on top. And what's cool is it's a perfect demonstration of kind of that knock-on effect about the well-oiled machine that is Shalka. You know, it's Ignar recognizing that I'm going to delay the backs. It's Upset yeah. saying, I've already got the control ward, now I'm going to do the freeze. And then it's Memento being like, okay, my bot lane set up a perfect gank for me. This is going to be easy. And when you're in that type of scenario, that's yeah. why Shalka are so scary. Everyone is doing their part. What I absolutely love is while everyone's doing their part, we hear Oda Womney in the interview going, yeah, KDA player, let him die, right? So it actually shows you it's a little inkling or a little insight into their team comms that they are discussing these moves. They are discussing these plays. I mean, the team is now on a four-game winning streak. They're at the top of the table as contenders. Um, and it's just... It's an exciting time for a team that was somewhat underrated coming in and is now one of the sleeper surprises uh, coming into the middle of the split. I mean, they're basically the resident sleeper team. They're sleeper yeah. OP. No one saw them coming. And when you look at, again, the roster, you didn't expect them to have this type of synergy. And that's what's been so uh, impressive about Shalka. They look like they've been playing together for years. And of course, because we saw the freeze set up by Upset in the bottom lane, but it was Ignar that made the first move. It is Upset that gets key up play of the game. He managed to pick up 50% of the votes. I think carries win all of the player of the games is rigged. I think that it, we're undervaluing the setup from everyone else. I think it's actually speaking about how across the board, almost in every single lane, the LEC has had a massive in surge of more talent. Again, yeah. EU has always been known for its talent, its new talent, and its old. And again, this shows perfectly why Upset is so good in the lane phase as well as his team fights. Especially when he's joined with Ignar and Memento and yes. the team. Thank you very much for that one, Frost. Coming up next, we've got two story teams, SK Gaming and Origin, taking to the stage. 